creepy music and a quote from Dante's Inferno can mean only one thing. Hop in your hand basket and buckle up, kids. We're going to hell. The Green Hell, specifically, where we will battle it out against A-tier AI tournament participants across four rounds, which include Owlwood, followed by Harrowing Woods, then Blueberry Thicket, and finishing it off with yet another round of Owlwood. Let's take a look at the keys to success for winning an A-tier tournament. First off, you're going to need to be able to birdie every hole. It doesn't mean that you have to, but it means that you need to at least know how to do it. you got to be very comfortable with throw-ins. The further the better, and typically using a straight disc that flies nice and flat, like a windbreak accurate fuse, hint hint. And you need to stay relaxed and steady. So if things go wrong, don't let it throw you. And if things go right, don't get too excited. Just keep nice and steady. And best of all, you don't have to be perfect. Especially on these Alwood holes, the AI participants seem to struggle just as much as regular people. Let's take a look at the bag I'll be using in the tournament. I don't have a putter. Instead, I opt for using a mid-range for my, all my putting and throw-ins, which would be the accurate windbreak fuse. I have the compass in there as well in case I need a little bit of fade at the end of the throw. My fairway drivers are both accurate and windbreak, so I have the explorer and the river. I got the musket as a glide accurate in case I need to go a little further. I've got the recoil for a little further still, which is glide windbreak. And then I've got my bomber discs. I've got my four ballista pros, which is the glide light, which goes the furthest in the air. And then I've got the turn windbreak in case I need a little more accuracy. I now have the light skip ballista pro, which just goes crazy distance. It's amazing. And so in this particular tournament, I'm kind of just testing it out. And then I have a uh, roll uh, light disc and I'm still, you know, checking out rollers. And so this one's in there as a test. All right, well, let's get into it. The green hell is uh, gonna really challenge your stamina because you do need to do all four rounds and at this point there isn't really a way to save your progress. So we're gonna start out with Alwood going one through nine. This uh, first hole I've been using the wind turn ballista pro and just kind of throwing it up the middle and letting it settle in and give me a throw in distance. This particular time 88 feet. With that wind I have to move it over and down a little bit but just trying to get it in there and get the birdie. So most of these I'm just trying to get a birdie. There aren't a whole lot of eagle opportunities. Uh, hole two is one of those where you can get an eagle, but I generally just try and run it for the birdie. So I'm using my recoil to get pretty close. And this 167 distance is tempting to run, so I'm just kind of going straight out at it, kind of giving it a half go. Caught the guard, but that's okay. I'll take the birdie. I also like to line up on that tree to give it a backstop. Uh, this this particular hole, just using a fuse, putting it out to the left of the position, trying to keep it under those branches. In this case, I uh, happen to catch rock and roll away. Well, uh, that's not a great result, but if you are within that distance, you still have a gap that you can throw in, so it's thankfully not too bad. Uh, sometimes you can roll away far enough that you don't have the throw in, and so it makes it even more challenging. For hole four, I'm just kind of sliding over and giving as much uh, fade as I can. With the wind that I've got, I'm going to use the musket, just try and get around some of these trees. Instead, clip the trees solid, but again, that's in an open shot, so 62 feet. You have to throw this one a little bit more firm because it's on a rock, so it's a little bit elevated of a basket, but so far, so good. This particular hole, I've just been using my turn windbreak ballista pro, trying to move it over, just miss that bush, and just kind of slide as close as I can to the basket. Um, nice and straight shot is very helpful there. My particular 44 foot putt, so that's not too bad to actually just do it in as a regular putt. So, so far, so good. This one is kind of a unique uh, throw for me. I switch it to forehand, I grab a disc to roll, I put it in the corner here, I do as much of a forehand as I can, and usually it works out okay. In this particular case though, the wind shoved it over far enough that I basically don't have a throw in uh, worth shooting. So I just kind of throw it hard to get through the brush, but I'm really not expecting to get 
the birdie on this one. So once again, though, you don't have to be perfect. So getting a par here is okay. You can see that I'm already two strokes ahead of the card, so that's kind of nice. With this hole, this one can be pretty annoying. So I just kind of throw it up nice and high with the Light Glide Ballista Pro and just try and get somewhere close. And this is uh, potentially one of the closest I've ever gotten. Is just you know really nice to have a 12-footer on this one, especially with the three wind. So that's that's kind of nice. Hole eight can be kind of a pain as well. Um, I break it into a couple shots, so I'm trying to just go up the middle as far as I can. And in this case, I'm trying out the new uh, light skip Ballista Pro and unfortunately go OB. So kind of sad to catch that corner, but I'm just kind of throwing this one into the landing area and going, okay, well, the best I can do right now on this one is to go ahead and get a par. So I guess I'll go ahead and see if I can do that. So that still gives me three strokes ahead of the card, which is nice. This one I'm sticking with the forehand using the Glide Light Ballista Pro, just uh, trying to get over the top of the first set of trees and then catching these other ones in order to slow the disc down a little bit. Now when you're against the wall it sometimes can be challenging but thankfully I'm far enough away that I can do a throw in if you're against the wall and you're putting. The walls now are a little bit more transparent so it makes it a little easier but at this time it's uh, kind of tough. So now we move on to Harrowing Woods, and we're going to play it straight up, just one through nine. And first hole, I like to just throw my um, glide accurate musket, uh, get into this landing area, and just throw this in. Had to elevate the putt a little bit with the distance, so uh, but managed to get the birdie, and currently tied for first, which is nice. So we have Stonehenge. Stonehenge just need to get into the inner circle. So avoid these rocks, which I completely failed to do. So now I'm parked behind the rock, which gives me a wonderful opportunity to use the rotate the world trick. So you just move over, you get the basket within view, and you slide the putt laterally and throw it in. If only Simon had known about that particular trick. Things might have been different. So hole three, pretty simple. Just going to use my explorer and throw it up the center, let it fade over towards the basket area, do a little slide, have 13 feet left, so that's not too bad. So right now all these are just basic routine birdies, so we're now going to move on to our first chance at getting a really good eagle, which uh, this is an ace opportunity, but you know if you don't get it then you just gotta hope that you keep it close enough, because sometimes it can roll down the hill and leave you with a lot of trouble. But in this case, it landed fairly nicely. So 17 foot in for another birdie. The Swampy Swamp section is a great place to pick up an eagle. So I slide it over, use my uh, Light Glide Ballista Pro, just try and crest that tree, land in this area, slide hopefully not too far to where it goes OB and just checks up nicely so 68 footer and you really need to try and cash those in when you get an opportunity this is a must eagle opportunity and managed to get it this other one I've been kind of using a variety of discs but in this case I'm just going with the recoil to try and make it to the opening uh, if it didn't catch that tree it probably would have made it a little further uh, using a ballista pro is also nice made it just over the guard so got an eagle and that's another one where it is really nice. It's almost a must eagle hole. Uh, spider tree, I just go with the musket and am just trying to get it up close enough to where I either have a putt or a tap in. In this particular case, 43 foot, since it's uphill, I'm going to go ahead and switch to backhand and throw that in instead, um, which worked out pretty well. There are lots of different areas in there that are fine for uh, landing and being able to see the basket. This one I break it into two shots so I'm just gonna throw the musket to make it past all these branches and land in this particular safe area and you can run this you can run it as a uh, eagle but uh, generally speaking when I'm just playing the AI tournaments I'm just playing for birdie because I'm taking the lowest possible risk 
and in this case just leaving myself 14 feet and getting birdie. So the par 5, uh, it's really nice to be able to get the eagle on it. So I just go with a backhand, throw the Ballista Pro over the top of the trees, and I get wedged. So this happens uh, somewhat frequently, and you know what? It really never bothers me, because I like to do a little bit of a roller action to get out of here. In this case, I'm going to use the recoil, and I just position it to where I'm throwing through the gap with my roller, and it usually works out pretty well. You know, even if you wind up, you know, cresting through all these trees, you know, the vertical nature of the disc means that it's going to slide through nicely, and uh, there, there's no foliage effect on these particular trees around the basket area, so even if you're behind some branches and stuff, you can manage to throw it in. So, pretty solid round on harrowing, and now we get kind of a break. We get a little bit of a rest, just uh, enjoying a nice casual round at Blueberry before we have to deal with Alwood again. So, I'm just uh, playing them, playing them straight up for the birdies. So, a nice, easy explorer throw for the first two holes and just trying to get it close and move it on so nice casual easy stuff so it's it's good to get this kind of breather before having to tackle another tough round this one's a great place to get a bonus eagle so with the uh, wind turn bliss pro i like to throw over the top a little bit and let the disc push to the right, and by throwing it over the top it widens the amount of hallway space, so the disc, even though it's going to go straight, is going to come in nicely there, and 95 is not too bad, but unfortunately threw it a little low, so caught guard, so instead of getting an eagle, I'm going to get birdie, which is okay, it would have been nice to have gotten that, but it was not an essential eagle. Um, this one I, I tend to play pretty pretty easy, just throwing the fuse straight up the center, letting it slide down the hill and getting a little close to the basket. You can run this, uh, you can run any of these for a, a ace, but with the AI tournament, the pressure on trying to do that is not nearly as much. So um, This one's going to be the same sort of thing. You know, just taking a fuse, taking it nice and casual. Uh, because of the elevation change, you can get away with using the mid-range instead of having to use a fairway. And it'll keep you close enough. So 29, even with the three headwind, it's really not too bad. This is a nice uh, little ace run. Uh, since the fuse is a little overpowered for here, I switch it to forehand to reduce the amount of power and to just line up on that tree and let the disc slide over. Um, unfortunately skipped off the guard so now I've got quite a bit of distance coming back but that's where you have to really get comfortable with your throw-ins so 79 feet that's pretty intimidating but it's really not too bad once you get the hang of uh, throwing things in this one since it's only 219 even though it's uphill I'm just using the Explorer and trying to get this close to the basket the hill is kind of nice because it'll just slow this the disc down and in this case I'm level with it with 15 so really a uh, rather routine this one's a little more uphill so I have to switch to the musket instead and I'm just trying to throw this a little wide and let it slide up that center hill and in this case worked out really well just nice tap in so made it look super routine which is nice since this is super downhill, uh, I could use the compass, but instead I like to use the Explorer and kind of just basically do a spike hyzer shot that comes in and just lands as long as I'm in this particular area and not behind any trees and it works out pretty well. So 29 feet routine and that leaves me with an entirely green card. And you can see I did not gain that much on the opponents, but works out all right. So now we're going to play Alwood backwards, starting with hole 9 and working our way to hole 1. Uh, again, I'm just trying to throw over the top of that first one, catch a little bit of branches in order to slow the disc down, and wind up being pretty close. And that's with the Light Glide Ballista Pro. 15 feet, I'll take that any day. So first kind of holes are very challenging and you just kind of want to survive in advance. So. Here we go on 8, and I'm still trying this uh, light glide, or not light glide, but light skip uh, Ballista Pro shot, and you know what, I've 
since changed uh, my play on this one. It just uh, didn't work out consistently enough. In this case, I'm behind a tree and going to try and force in the explorer and nope, catches it. But it actually moves out into an open area, so 80 feet uphill, that is a possible shot. And I put it too low. So, caught guard, wound up getting a par. It's okay though. Again, you don't have to be perfect. So pars in general are not going to kill you unless you have a whole bunch of them. With this wind, I'm able to basically just throw the Ballista Pro uh, light glide over the top and let it hook in, catch some branches and slow down and should be just fine. So again, a really nice result, 23 feet in for a birdie. And we're going to try that forehand roller line again, and hopefully this time it works out a little bit better. Putting it down, and I like to do it as far as extreme as possible, and again, it's sliding into the area. I just uh, really just have to keep an eye on the wind, but you can see that this disc is going to fight its way through to the open area. And a 61 footer with two tailwind should be pretty routine. And a little high, but it stayed on the inside, so that's nice. And this, I'm just using my turn wind uh, brake Ballista Pro. And that lets it uh, slide over to the right a little bit, but throw nice and straight. And you can see that it gets a real good result, 16 footer. So at this point, uh, I only have a few more holes to go. I've got a nice lead on the second place so looking pretty well with this wind sometimes I'll consider using the Explorer but in this case I'm gonna go ahead and use the musket and once again nail that tree but that leaves me a 64 with three wind this could be a little dicey so I'm gonna lower it a little bit and just kind of throw it nice and smooth and just try and make it over the guard yeah, again you have to throw it a little bit more firm than you would if it was flat because of the elevation of the basket um, again this is just a few shot and hopefully this time I'm avoiding catching that rock wall and going down to the right. So instead, catch a little bit, uh, bounce through. But 34 foot, not too bad. Shouldn't have any trouble. Should be nice and routine. And just two holes to go. And looking at this, there is no reason why I would need to run the eagle on it. So I'm just throwing the recoil because I want it to go with straight nicely and then have a little bit of a finish to the left. In this case 222 feet, three headwinds, so I'm going to elevate this quite a bit and throw it a lot more firm. Now if you elevate and land nice and flat it should slide a little bit but stop instead of sliding off the island. So that worked out really nicely for me in 25 foot. So just one more hole and a five stroke lead so keeping it nice and simple going with the turn windbreak Ballista Pro, throwing it up the center, avoiding the branches from that little brush, and leveling out. So I've got a 40 footer and nothing but a simple putt, so just throwing it in. And there you go. Uh, minus 36, which is good enough to be first place, beating the next closest by five strokes. And keeping it nice and smooth and simple and routine, getting the birdies when I can, and it works out really well. So that's kind of the process that I go through, and hopefully that helps, and hopefully you can start crushing the Green Hell A-tier tournament opponents as well. I like to finish off the video with some juggling. Since this tournament was four rounds, it's only appropriate that I juggle four. This pattern too easy? How about four ball alternating columns? Still too easy, then some multiplex end grabs. Making it even more difficult, let's go with sight swap 552, moving the twos, that, thus producing a four ball weave. That should keep you busy for a while. Until next time, this is David Salee, and I will catch you later.